song in Grahamstown? What is wrong even in the Eastern Cape, in your opinion? Listen, that's such a, yeah, that's an on-point question. Hmm. If you if you were to do like a documentary on Grahamstown, Makanda, Akhini, and its degradation, it is a snapshot into what's wrong with the entire province and the country. Yeah. Literally, every single thing. I mean, I go back two, three times a year, if I can, university or to visit family because my family is still there. Sure. The potholes are gigantic. The water provision is crappy. The finances are horrible. Refuse removal doesn't happen. It used to be a quote-unquote safe space for families to send their kids. Well, you know, if you're middle class, mm. we can go to these fancy schools and it's sure. a good place. It's got the high court there provincially. Of course, with a festival, it's also significant culturally. But now it is a shadow of its former self mm. completely mm. Uh, to the point where the citizens have had to put their differences aside, sure. town and gown, and with the unemployed people's movement, with um, Ayanda Quarter, and with you know one or two people from the posh side of town sure. cooperating to challenge the ANC mm. and the DA and to run as a civic-based organization basically in the local elections sure. to see whether they can take over the money and do a better job of running the municipality. They sure. also instituted legal action to force Bisho to take over the municipality because it wasn't fulfilling its its legal duties. Yeah. And so the long and short of it is that, you know, the state of Makanda is the state of the country. And um, the lack of faith that the citizens have in all the political players, mm. be it DA or ANC, sure. also tells you just how jaded the citizens of Makanda actually are. Sure. I'm sad when I go home, especially Jorza, sure. Kanda Township, you know, um, if you know Grahamstown well, Ghost Town um, and, and other areas, Wuchenug, Fergenug, people just look defeated. Sure. It's like they don't have a stake in the country and in the country's economy and democracy. Mm. And unemployment levels there are probably higher than what it is nationally. I can imagine. You know, and so it's it's really, really sad. It hurts, eh? It, it, it does hurt. Absolutely. You you feel like a survivor yeah. if you go back and you come from Chorzy. You sure. know, it's like you have survivor's guilt. Um, do you do you think edu do you personally think education is the key? I'm asking this because Zimbabweans are quite literate and quite educated, but they seem to be struggling to solve their own problems. Grahamstown is known as an educational town. It's got some of the best schools in the country and it's got Rose Universities where some of the greatest leaders in the country and even in other parts of the world. It's like, but you guys had an education institution there. Why has it failed to transform a small town into maybe like a Stellenbosch, for example? Do you think education is the answer or is there something that we're missing? Because oh, you're asking deep questions early on in our Sorry, sorry, sorry. Look, yes and no in the sense that Zimbabwe is a good example that you can have an educated population and you can still have a political elite that preys on the entire society. Sure. Zim in the 80s was incredible. Um, when I was at Rhodes in the late 90s, all the way until the mid 2000s, um, it was a wake up call to me as a South African that hadn't traveled anywhere and who thought that anything north of Lompopo must be not quite as cool as South Africa. True. And suddenly you have to deal with all these like Zim students at who are fancier than us, who at are Rhodes. more cosmopolitan at Rhodes, <laughs> who are smarter than us, who've done A-levels, yeah. for whom first year is a joke while yeah. we catch up to where they were at the end of schooling. But then you fast forward into 2000 and then there on and Zim just starts falling apart. And the lesson of Zim is that even when your revolutionaries become your first government and they invest in things like education, if you don't have proper oversight and if the educated class is not actively involved in keeping a, a close eye over the politicians and getting actively involved in politics, then your society can fall apart because they can get on with mischief while you are looking away. And part of the reason why I'm speaking so passionately about it this, this, is that yesterday I finished Songhezo Zibi's um, book, Manifesto, mm. which is out now. And um, it is the main thing that he says. He addresses the three of us yeah. in the book. And he says, professional class, I'm speaking to you. We outsource activism to the poor and to the working class. And we retreat as the professional class because we don't want to get our hands dirty and mm. get involved in politics. What are the chances of us running to be an independent council of our wards, for example? Sure. So that's a long way to say that the direct answer to your question is education helps. Sure. But unless the middle class and the educated class and the professional class is prepared to actually get inside the political arena, mm. the people who put up their hands to be in the political arena, they get to control the levers of power. Of course. Somebody was Jeez. saying that 